my dishwasher is going on in the background so I hope you don't hear too much of that and so I'm gonna try to speak a little bit louder for this one Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well I want to discuss the sort of considerations before doing starship energy work or before contacting extraterrestrials these are just some of the things that we should maybe be aware of before we try and contact any star beings one of the main things is to actually know what you're about to go into sometimes some people might just be very curious they might just be approaching this as an experimental thing maybe they are curious about this as uh, just a way of expanding spiritually. I also wanted to make this video for those that are just not sure, like maybe somebody told you that this was a good idea but you're just not sure because maybe you are just not that comfortable with extraterrestrials, maybe you are just not that open uh, deep down or maybe you are, maybe you are open but uh, there's something that's kind of maybe scaring you, maybe there's something that's making you a bit unsure. When this is done right, this can be very expansive, very enlightening, very aligning, very beautiful path to go on. A useful practice to start working with because a lot of us have indeed been brought into a paradigm that pushes limitations as the only opportunity, that pushes limitations as an obligatory sort of framework to work in. There's even uh, a lot of skepticism around sometimes. We want to of course remember to be discerning about who we talk to about this because sometimes people do get encouraged to do things and that person might not know anything about the topic that they're talking about. So in that situation we want to have discernment. We want to have discernment when it comes to the beings that we're talking to. I have already made a video on like the basics of connecting with extraterrestrial beings. There are some things that I didn't necessarily touch on in that video that I want to talk about. This is a bit more of a stream of consciousness so I don't have any notes, I just have my experience to share from. And first of all is of course knowing how to connect with beings to begin with. That's an important skill to have before you get into this. It's important to at least know what your method is. A little bit of something about the multidimensional nature of the universe. Knowing about, say, your own higher self. Knowing something about how psychic phenomena works. Knowing something about energy. You do have to have some basic knowledge around this stuff. You don't necessarily have to be a witch or you don't have to be an occultist, you don't have to be something like that to get into this type of practice, but that will be very beneficial. My beginning was in tarot mostly, but then I also kind of had this mix of all kinds of practices. There was Buddhism, then there was some of that more, I guess, ascension type 12 chakra work. I started with the seven chakras of course, but then I went into 12 chakras and uh, nobody was talking about it back then. This was like 2016. So there's almost no information at all about this. That is one of those big things that kind of got me again more open to extraterrestrial communication because I was already aware that, you know, that could happen through spiritual communication. Witchcraft came into the, the game around the same time, like I was just really curious about these type of things and astrology. Before that, uh, I was aware of the law of attraction, the law of cause and effect, karma. I was aware of, you know, intuition, really into my dream work, like that was a big deal then, tarot. That's kind of how that journey came for me. This is then where I found my home because uh, I have been into aliens since I was a child. And then speaking to the divine, I was communicating with God. That's how I knew the divine as back then. You wanna kind of have some kind of an idea on how some of these dynamics work because that's then going to help you understand how the extraterrestrial consciousness works. Now, if you are already a spirit worker, and this is kind of just like a new branch of your 
things to remember that this is a very high vibration most of the time. There are some beings that may not be as much of a high vibration. They might be working more in the 4D astral type of things. And some of them are descending even lower because of the division of the worlds and whatnot. The energies that, for example, I work with are of that higher dimension. That's why I kind of get a bit like... Uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes <laughs> because like I might be talking to my Andromedan family and they just feel like, oh, what is this? What word do I use to describe this? Because they speak in energy. Sometimes these messages might take a little while to unfold because the communication, first of all, when it's high vibration, means there's a very high frequency, means that it might take a little while for your a little bit slower human brain to really understand. Especially if you're only been working at, at say your fifth dimensional self, which is like the very beginning of getting to know your higher self. I'm gonna make a video about multidimensional embodiment and my experiences with that, how I've done it, how it's worked out, what it does, what it can do, any tips and whatnot. It's an important part of humanity's evolution, especially for starseeds right now. Unless you are already embodying, it might be harder to really get into that work and to really understand what is being spoken to you and what is being given to you, because sometimes they do give you upgrades, they do give you things to work with, actually. And that has been happening for a long time for me, that they just give me things to work with. It's not always just a message or prophecy. For example, when we channel, there might be a prophecy that comes, you know. It might be uh, a message for the future. But it also, when we speak, when we have a dialogue with the extraterrestrial beings, it's not always channeling. We don't always have to channel the beings that come through. We can have a dialogue, we can discuss, we can exchange energy and work with the beings. And I'm also gonna make a video about the difference between channeling and a download, because those are also two different things. I kind of see the download as coming through your own multidimensional uh, ascension columns, your higher levels and stuff, and that is, it's kind of like your own versus when you channel, it can be anything. It can be another star species that isn't really even connected to you. Sometimes that difference can be too much for some people. I want people to really understand that, that we don't want to just go out there, like especially if you're already into this, we don't want to just go out there and just tell everyone to talk to aliens because they might not be ready for it, they might actually uh, have a bit of a shock, they might have a situation happen. Uh, sometimes, yes, these a lot of these cosmic shifts, they do like give us a reason to doubt our reality or to just reshape how our whole cognition works. And a lot of, you know, brain upgrades can also happen, but it might be hard to get used to those things. Sometimes we might have this idea that, again, ascension, spirit work, spirituality is all just fluffy bunnies, that it's also just like this fun joy, you know, all the time. The process sometimes isn't all the, the fun and joy. Sometimes the ascension process is calling you to let go of things as well. Sometimes you get revelations about different situations and people and things that may be still in your life or may have happened a long time ago. Sometimes you get revelations about timelines where you're just gonna have to do a little bit more work that isn't so easy. If somebody kind of comes into contact with extraterrestrials and they're just like, it's their first time, they haven't done that before, it can feel a little bit intense. Coming back to this topic of just making sure that you know what you're going into. And another point, um, quite an important point to make about knowing what you're getting into is that you have to know the being or the beings, the being groups that you're about to speak to. So I wouldn't recommend just going in and just like saying to yourself, okay, I'm gonna channel extraterrestrials, <laughs> because that's very vague and that can actually uh, even just invite an entity that might represent extraterrestrials, but it might not be 
the type of being that you want to talk to, right? And it can even be something like a trickster spirit or, or a faker spirit, you know, some kind of a shapeshifter thing. It can be something that just hanging out in the 4D astral. Maybe it's something that was on TV and uh, people made a thought form around that. All kinds of freak things can happen. So just make sure that you are setting your intentions when you go into any kind of channeling or any kind of extraterrestrial contact in whatever way you are choosing to do that. And, and you kind of make sure that, okay, I'm going to, for example, connect with my star family now in the highest good of all involved and allow only the highest vibrations that I can handle come through. And that's an important part as well. Ask for the the highest vibrations of that you can handle. That's an important part, but also allow the beings that are the most essential and the most important right now for your process in whatever spiritual work you're doing. And even though we want to make sure that we are aware of what what and who we are connecting with. There are also, again, infinite numbers of beings and galactic energies out there because the, the cosmos is so vast that there's just a lot of energy like that we don't even know about. So in that case, there may be a being that comes through, uh, especially if we are talking about something like galactic origins. So if you go into that type of thing, there may be a place in the stars that nobody has talked about yet. That happens. And therefore there has to be a little bit more study done to understand that. And the best study that is done is your own experience. So if you ever hear, even just, even if you just hear me talk about Syrians, that's my experience. And that's based on my study, that's based on uh, whatever I know about these beings and whatever my work with them has been, whatever my work with my uh, multidimensional past life selves as Syrians has been. Uh, and so that's the sort of idea that you want to keep in mind. Of course, like I mentioned in my How to Connect is just be aware of any kind of communication. Like it might not be that obvious. Sometimes if you're not ready for it, it might not it might not happen that easily or it might not happen that quickly. And uh, then you're just gonna have to allow yourself to go through your spiritual process and progress accordingly. Now, I feel like that's exactly one of the reasons why I didn't yet see aliens when I was a child, because even though I had a lot of other things, you know, that I was able to do and fun and stuff like that. I just wasn't um, meant to become psychically clairvoyant or anything like that back then. Uh, I was just meant to maybe work more through uh, other means of communication and other means of understanding. Uh, so that's just one thing. And then of course I had all kinds of mental health things. Uh, that I had to figure out and so that's another consideration of course make sure you are um, like I'm not saying that you can't do this if you're not perfectly healthy like of course you can I, and I, I can't stop you right uh, and I did this when I was, was like uh, actually my Claire's awakened after a pretty traumatic experience and then I just like start to live my life differently a lot of things happened that year. Make sure you're healthy, like if um, if you feel like, for example, your mental health is like very shaky and you haven't had like an established spiritual practice, please uh, think twice before going into this because it can be really intense in those situations. It might be too intense, right? Like it might be a little bit too much. To again, do this when you are able to be peaceful, when you are feeling really balanced, really uh, good. Just know yourself. Know yourself when it comes to this. You feel like some spiritual phenomena might be too much for you. Yeah, do some imagining about this. Imagine if, if you were able to see beings. How would you react to that? 
if you were able to communicate with extraterrestrial, how would you feel about that? How would that be like for you? That's kind of the maybe one thing that you can use to measure whether or not you are ready for this. Uh, thank you for listening. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, and give this video a thumbs up. Very much appreciated. And I'll see you very soon. Stay inspiring.